Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the nearly impenetrable hardwood forests of the Algonquin Provincial Park in Ontario, Canada. The landscape here was shaped by untold eons of glacial activity leaving behind rolling landscapes, small cliffs, and rich soils. Beavers bob along the lakes and ponds as they chew branches to build their lodges. The dense forests of sugar maple, hemlock, and yellow birch hide moose and white-tailed deer, and the common predators of the area are wolves and black bear. It is in this setting that today's episode takes place. In May 1978, 18-year-old Richard Rindris and his 16-year-old brother, William, invited 12-year-old George Hafkeny and his 14-year-old brother, Mark, out for a great day on the lake, fishing at Radiant Lake. The early summer sun bounced off the ripples, confirming its name. The boys spent the morning running up and down the lake shore, casting their bait into promising fishing holes and laughing together. Their campfire kept them warm as the summer sun heated the day and lit up the beautiful green foliage surrounding them. The fish were hungry and big, and the boys ran their stringer through the gills of each of the fish they caught, then ran off to catch the next one. As the day wore on and the afternoon faded, there was a very subtle shift in the shadows. From the dense brush, a large black bear watched the young men laugh and holler while they fished. Being an amazing ambush predator, well camouflaged for stalking the dark shadows of thick forests, the bear no doubt analyzed every approach alley to sneak upon the boys, and still remain concealed. The boys had spread out a bit as the evening approached, and George was hidden around a bend in the shoreline. The visual contact the boys had maintained all day had relaxed a bit, and the fun had reduced their watchfulness. George quietly readied his hook for another cast into the clear, cold waters, but was unaware that he had become the object of a hungry visitor's fascination. As George cast his bait, then waited impatiently for a bite, the large black bear slipped silently through the growing shadows to within a few yards of him. The leaves on the forest floor were several months old and had decomposed through a freezing winter which robbed them of their crunch and rustling. The bear's approach was virtually silent to the unaware young fisherman. In a blinding ambush from behind the boy, the bear quickly broke his neck and ended his life in terror. With George's death, his stretch of the shore was eerily silent. Mark and William were a little ways away, but started to grow concerned when they hadn't heard from George for a while. The two boys began calling his name, but received no answer. It seemed possible he was a little farther away than they thought, so they continued to yell, louder this time. After an extended bout of yelling and hollering, the boys decided to investigate George's whereabouts. They made their way along the shoreline for a while, but couldn't find a trace of George. Unbeknownst to the young men, the bear undoubtedly heard their voices and listened as they approached George's body, now being claimed as its food. The bear slipped into the shadows toward the boys to intercept them while they were unaware. George's brother Mark began walking a worn trail away from the shoreline to investigate in an attempt to find any sign of his brother. As he delved deeper into the forest, the light faded and bushes closed in around the trail. The bear ambushed him quickly in a similar way it did George and broke his neck. His death was quick and merciful. The bear now had two dead bodies from which to feed, but the horror wasn't over yet. William was only a few dozen yards away and heard the commotion of the attack on Mark. It's apparent he wasn't alarmed at the noise as it didn't sound like a prolonged struggle. As William crept closer, the bear circled through the underbrush for concealment. It emerged quickly and broke William's neck in the same fashion as it had Mark's. William now lay dead near his friends and fellow fishermen. With three young men dead and hidden by the thick vegetation, the bear had more than enough to eat, but hadn't set upon them to consume them yet. Back near the shoreline, Richard was puzzled by the silence that had now overtaken the laughter and clatter the young boys had made. He was concerned as they seemed to disappear, one by one, with no clues left as to where they'd gone. Richard started to look around and yell for the youngsters, but received no answers to his calls. He searched the shoreline along the lake, but could see no fishing poles, no one standing or waiting in the shallows. He started to grow uneasy at the other boy's absence and briefly searched for them near the woodline. Something wasn't right about this situation, and he couldn't figure out what it was. 
Once his solitude set in, he decided he would go get help to find the three boys and hastily departed to get it. He contacted local authorities and told them of the three missing boys. He recalled how he could see or hear them nearly all day, but that they suddenly, one by one, disappeared. They agreed to go to the lake and help him find them. As the search party arrived at the lake, the men spread out and began searching the area. They could see the fishing tackle and poles laying here and there amongst the bushes, as well as a few footprints, but the boys were nowhere to be found. After searching for a short time, the search party discovered the bodies of George and Mark Hafkeny, as well as William Rindris. The boys had all died in similar fashion, a quick bite or blow to the neck. Their bodies hadn't been consumed yet, but their wounds were clearly intended to kill. In the brush a few yards away from the bodies, a large black bear stood guard. It defended their bodies from the rescue team, but there is no source I could find stating whether the bear was killed or merely driven off so the bodies could be recovered. The attacks were deemed a predatory attack given the nature of them and the fact that the bear had guarded them. Some authorities suggested the smell of the fish the boys had caught may have brought in the bear and set up the attacks. After reviewing the somewhat limited facts surrounding this attack, I'm left wondering, was this attack exclusively predatory or did it have an element of territorial defense to it? Why did the bear kill more than one of the boys if it was a predatory attack? If you think it was a territorial attack, could the fish the boys caught have triggered it? If the boys had brought a gun, do you think the outcome could have been different? Do you think that bear spray could have prevented this attack? In prior episodes, we've learned that a boisterous approach to a bear food cache can temporarily run off a bear. Why do you think the boys alerting the bear to their whereabouts didn't scare it away from George's body? If you have any answers to my questions, or perhaps your own, please post them in the comments below and let's discuss it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our channel. Clicking the bell icon will keep you posted when we release new videos, and sharing our links to your social media spreads awareness and is fun. If you would like to support our channel, please click on the Patreon link below this video. Our merch store is slowly being rebuilt and features some really cool Scary Bear Attacks branded products. It's linked below this video too. A quick thanks to our patrons Melissa Gottlieb, Patrick McCose, Megan Trend, Nathan P., Dina White, Cole Rodriguez, Aurora, April Donovan, Ryan Cernicky, Char, Chris Marlar, Fluffy Feet, Cheyenne, and Drone Adventures. Your support means the world to me. As a valued member of our human community, I encourage you to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.